There's something very broken about the process of assessing our technical skills during the interview process. We've all been through it. We've answered questions, written code on whiteboards, puzzled out brain teasers, and selected multiple choice responses for made up programming languages. More often than not, we are deemed inadequate. It's not you, it's them. Technical interviews are fundamentally broken and I will tell you why. Hello, I'm Trisha G. Welcome to the Continuous Delivery Channel, where we like to give advice that helps developers to grow. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you find the advice helpful. In order to get a job as a developer, of course, the hiring organization is going to want to see if you can actually do the job. They've read your CV or resume, and now they're going to test your ability to do the job. The only thing is, they're not. The technical interview is, at best, loosely correlated to the skills you're going to use. At worst, it's an exercise in gatekeeping and making the hiring developers feel smart. In this video, we're going to explore why technical interviews are so broken, why failure is actually a good thing, and what you can do to improve your chances of getting a job. While there are lessons here for hiring organizations, not least of all, train your interviewers, this is aimed at you if you want to get a job in the industry. I want to thank our sponsors, Equal Experts, Transfic, Tuple, and Honeycomb. These companies offer products and services that complement the content we cover on this channel. Links are in the description. Please take a look. Why is it so hard to interview people? It's actually because we don't know what makes a good developer. We can't ask the questions and set tasks if we don't know the actual skills required. For example, in your day job, when was the last time you actually reversed a linked list or wrote code on a whiteboard? or use a framework without help from Google, Stack Overflow, or an AI assistant. What we actually do is debug existing code, work within the limitations of the frameworks and the design used in this project, we ask the business questions about what they really need, and we weigh up pros and cons of different approaches given the constraints of our environment. We are not algorithm machines. Another problem lies with those asking the questions and deciding who to hire. Like us, they are human and basically living bags of biases and assumptions. It's okay to look for someone you'll enjoy working with as an interviewer. Dave Farley said to me when I was interviewing people, are you going to learn from this person? Do you want to sit with them and pair program with them? That's valid. However, we do have to be careful not just to pick people who feel familiar, who are just like us. And we are bad at that even with training. We are much worse without training. For example, it feels natural to look at people's hobbies and interests to see if we would get on with them. This is, in many countries, actually illegal. Think about what hobbies and interests tell us about this person's life outside of work. Do they have children? Are they perhaps living with disabilities? Are they perhaps living a life which is very different to ours? Nowadays, I prefer to ask people when I'm interviewing them about actual technical challenges they've faced. It gives me a better idea of how they think, what they value, and whether that's going to work for me or not. Many places do offer training to people who perform technical interviews, but you will find many interviewers who, for example, have not thought about what they actually want from the candidate, have not been taught how to evaluate the responses of a candidate, and do not know what you can't ask candidates about. It's worth understanding that interviewing is a bit like dating, for better or for worse. It's a two-way match. It's not just about making us likable to the company so they hire us. It's also about us finding a company that's going to work for us, where we're going to be comfortable working, where we are going to grow professionally. In the early days of job hunting, me and my friends would get really upset if we were turned down by a company. We thought that we weren't good enough and we really needed the job. And we didn't want to put ourselves through that humiliation all over again and again and again. Later, after a series of suboptimal jobs, we all realized that being turned down by an organization for being not a good fit or not technical enough was probably a good thing. 
We did not want to work for organisations that saw having people skills as a sign of not having technical skills. We did not want to work for places where you had to do it their way and no other options are considered. We did not want to work for teams who had never hired someone from our background before. We don't want to work everywhere. But we do want to maximise our chances of being offered the job that is at the right sort of organisation for us. You can improve your chances of success in technical interviews. Being good at interviews is a skill. There are high schools that prep kids for certain types of universities and they teach them what to expect in the university interview and how to look good. Being good at interviews is not about lying. It's not about faking it until you make it. It's about putting the best you forward. And it's about getting past the arbitrary gatekeeping, the poorly trained interviewers and the tick box responses to standard questions. My first piece of advice for getting good at technical interviews is to research common topics. In the mid noughties when I was interviewing a bunch in London trying to find good Java developer jobs, you had to answer Java concurrency questions in a very specific way. You had to be able to spot common problems in multi-threaded code, like shared state that could be updated by different threads. This was despite the fact that most Java jobs at the time used servlets, and code was usually stateless and effectively single-threaded. Fashions change and technologies move on, but even these days, some interviewers are looking for you to mention the synchronized keyword when talking about multi-threaded Java, even though there are many newer and arguably better ways to handle concurrency. Sometimes it's a case of using the right keyword in your interview answers. More on that in a minute. Use search engines, and social media, and if available, attend local user groups to research common topics for technical interviews of the type of job that you're applying for. These will vary depending on the programming languages, the business domains, and even the cities of the jobs you're applying for. I'm not convinced that technical certifications and exams are a genuine indication of a developer's ability, but skimming through certification prep websites or books with example questions and answers can be a good way to learn industry jargon and the expected responses to certain types of problems. So let's talk a bit more about jargon and the words we use. It's important to know the right words when you're in a technical interview. You may be using polymorphism every day in your code, you may understand it in your bones, but if you don't use the magic word polymorphism during the interview, particularly if your interviewer isn't technical and is looking to tick off the right answers, you won't pass that interview. I used to think that knowing the right words was secondary to being able to apply the techniques, but using the right terminology is a shortcut to help you communicate with someone else about that technology. You can brush up on technical terms with a bit of internet research, although searching for them can be tricky if you don't know what the words are yet. But you don't need a computer science degree to learn about algorithms, object-oriented or functional programming, or design patterns. I used to skim through headfirst design patterns when I was actively looking for a new job. It is never a waste of time to have a high level understanding of design patterns for job interviews. Even if they don't ask you to explain a design pattern of your choice, which by the way is a common interview question, you can squeeze it into your answers anyway to show how smart you are. Which leads me to the next point. Take the interview in your direction. One of the reasons interviews are so difficult is because they can all be very different. Each organization and each individual interviewer is looking for something different. You can't possibly learn all of those things. Learn some things really well. Ideally, some of the common themes that crop up if you can identify them. Also, look for areas where you're already strong and practice telling a story around that. Have you had a lot of practice demoing applications to end users? Be sure to work into the conversation how you are trusted to communicate to users and to listen to their concerns and feed that back to the team. Did you create an internal tool to solve a specific problem? Work out a way to talk about how you identified the problem, what things you were considering when you designed the tool, which patterns or technologies you selected and why, and how you got buy-in to develop the tool and get others to use it. If you spend the whole interview just reacting to their questions and guessing what they need, you're missing the chance to show them your best side. Show them what you're good at, even if you work it into the conversation by not quite answering a sort of related question. This way, you show them who you are. And if that doesn't suit them, 
you don't want to work there anyway. But that's much better than being rejected because you couldn't write an algorithm to reverse a linked list on a whiteboard with no access to Google. Like any skill, the skill of being good at interviews takes practice. It's a numbers game. You're more likely to succeed if you attend more interviews. You're more likely to improve if you've been interviewed a bunch of times. Say yes to interviews for jobs you don't really want. It's good practice and they might surprise you. For juniors, the practice is basically mandatory. But even later on in your career, practicing interviews is valuable. Fashions and trends in interviews change. You may be rusty at interviews. You may benefit from a confidence boost from knowing the answers to these things. You may also learn that you actually like your job, or you may gain a better understanding of what you're looking for in a new job. In summary, technical interviews are broken. It's quite depressing to consider how little we still know about evaluating a developer's ability to do the job. All is not lost. Passing a technical interview is a skill like any other, even if it's often not at all related to the day job. And remember, this is a two-way process. You're interviewing them as much as they are interviewing you. You want to showcase the best you that you can, and you also want to check that the normal version of you would be comfortable working at that job, even if it's only until the next opportunity comes along. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting us on Patreon.